Hello everyone, I'm Claire Huddleston. Thanks for joining us tonight. As Tuscaloosa continues to rebuild after April 27th tornado, some residents are concerned about affordable homeowners insurance. The governor's affordable homeowners insurance commission had a meeting in public forum tonight to address some of those concerns. Jennifer Edwards has the details. In a state that always seems to be rebuilding from natural disasters, Governor Robert Bentley is sending help. Governor Bentley created the Alabama Homeowners Insurance Commission to address issues resulting from the lack of affordable insurance for Alabama homeowners after natural disasters. And we realized it was probably formed to uh, discuss issues related to the Gulf Coast, but since the tornado came, I think their mission has been expanded and, and now they'll be looking at all of Alabama and how the effects of homeowners insurance is impacted by devastating storms and hurricanes and tor such as hurricanes and tornadoes. Engineers, architects, state officials, insurance agents, and residents came from all over Alabama to offer advice and address concerns regarding insurance and rebuilding. After, and one of the things we're really deeply concerned about is the Department of Insurance does not collect data on an aggregate basis on the amount of claims made in Tuscaloosa versus the premiums you're paying. So when they start going up on the people in Tuscaloosa and Birmingham, you've got the Department of Insurance doesn't have this independent data in order to decide whether or not those premiums are really validly going up or not. And the same thing is affecting us. So we think there's some shared concerns here and we'd like to over time see if we can develop some alliances. Wedgworth says there's a lot Tuscaloosa can learn from the commission. These people are here all for Tuscaloosa, so it's exciting for me to be able to listen to them and to think that they're here trying to figure out a better way for Tuscaloosa. Uh, one thing that we, we, we're hearing a lot of discussion today is on making our homes stronger. The commission's first priority is listening to the people and addressing their concerns. Reporting in Tuscaloosa, Jennifer Edwards, WVUA News. This was just one of three meetings the commission has organized to address homeowners insurance. Tuscaloosa's new superintendent is getting feedback from the community about moving the city school system forward. WVA's Matt McCoy shows us what he heard from parents tonight. Just two weeks into his first school year as the superintendent of the Tuscaloosa City School System, Dr. Paul McKendrick is giving a chance for teachers and parents to voice their concerns and praise of the Tuscaloosa City School System in three different meetings. The first one tonight here at Paul Bryan High School. I thank you for everybody pulling together. My um, son was in second grade last year. He had to be in time. Thank you for having the program for the ones that are not achieving everything right away and I feel like school systems don't always run in the most logical way and when you're trying to get something done there's a lot of we can't do that we can't do this we're bound by this we have money for this but we can't use that money to do this. When Dr. McKendrick interviewed for the superintendent position he revealed a plan for a listening tour where he wants to hear from the parents inside the school system. It's just important for parents to be a part of all of these discussions with um, whether they're going to be innovations that we put in place, parents need to be there and tell us what those are. But it's not just parents sharing their feedback. I've also talked with board members, I've talked with PTA presidents, I've talked with the PTA council, I've talked with parents. Dr. McKendrick is hoping to get the feedback from the parents and teachers and a plan put together as soon as possible. Reporting in Tuscaloosa, Matt McCoy, WVUA News. The next meeting is tomorrow at Central High School, followed by one Monday, September 19th at Northridge High School. Both meetings start at 6 o'clock. In your home team crime watch, a robbery and stabbing case. Tuscaloosa police responded to the intersection of Hargrove Road and 10th Avenue around 920 last night. Police say the suspect tried to sell the victim a cell phone. The victim refused and walked into a gas station. TPD says the victim tried to leave the store and get into his car, but the suspect stabbed him, took his wallet, and left the scene. The suspect is a black man between 25 and 30 years old. He's over 6 feet tall and weighs about 175 pounds. He was wearing a black shirt, a tan shirt, excuse me, a black hat, a tan shirt, blue and white plaid shorts, and black shoes. If you have any information, call Tuscaloosa Police at 205-349-2121. Tuscaloosa homicide investigators are still looking for the person who killed a University of Alabama student this weekend. The shooting was early Sunday morning at Sterling Crimson Apartments near the intersection of 17th Street and 10th Avenue in Tuscaloosa. Police say 25-year-old James Harry Johnson III, who went by the name Trey, was walking from his car when someone shot him. He died shortly after he got to DCH. Investigators have no suspects at this time.
We apologize. We are having some technical difficulties. Sterling Crimson released a statement today saying, quote, Sterling is working with all three of our on-site courtesy patrol officers, who are also Tuscaloosa police officers, to put together a safety and security meeting later this week to discuss what measures we can all take to minimize the likelihood of further such incidents and keep its residents informed. Additionally, we have asked our courtesy patrol officers to set up their nightly patrols and to do so in uniform whenever possible. We have an update to another shooting from this weekend. The Tuscaloosa Metro Homicide Unit says Ricky Crooks is charged with attempted murder. They say Crooks got into a fight at a gas station near the intersection of 10th Avenue and Hargrove Road. They say as he was driving away, he fired shots at the gas station. No one was hurt. A Shelton State student's death has been ruled accidental. 21-year-old Jonathan Sullivan died June 15th during a rock climbing trip in Virginia. The National Park Service says his death was an accident. According to Ranger Steve Stinnett, Sullivan's rope webbing wasn't correctly secured. He fell about 100 feet. Time for a first look at Alabama's home team forecast. Here's Chief Meteorologist Richard Scott. Hey Claire, good Monday night too. Now for some good news actually, we're talking temperatures fairly comfortable outside. Been outdoors this evening, not all that bad. 71 degrees, Tons schools of Birmingham, Montgomery, Evergreen, Greenwood, Tupelo, pretty much the popular number out there. 71, 68, some of the cooler spots like Anniston, Muscle Shoals, and 67 right now. No clouds to talk about, no rain out there this evening. In fact, we are completely dry. Uh, some ground clutter showing up on radar site, but again, all of us dry this evening. No chance to rain until we get to the day on Wednesday, and even then, it's a small chance. Thursday, the best chance to rain. By the way, early tomorrow morning, the bus stop forecast for Tuesday, 61 on average, a nice cool start to the day. What about the rest of the forecast, your weekend forecast, and yeah, we'll look at the tropics. Home team weather is coming up. The University of Alabama's Honors College Assembly has had its first Art Speaks show featuring work from three students. WVA's Lindsay Price has more in this week's Capstone Correspondent Report. Hi, I'm Capstone Correspondent Lindsay Price, a senior majoring in Broadcast News. Last week's Art Speak show was the first of four to be held by the school year. Director of HCA's Arts Awareness, Colby Leopard, says they plan to hold two shows each semester and says it's important for the students to have opportunities like this. Art to me is about expressing yourself and uh, it's an important component of that is expressing yourself to others. So what this art gallery allows the artists to do is to share their work with the rest of the campus. Two of the artists featured say they are glad the university is providing a platform for their work. And the university does so many things to you know get students involved and also you know put them in the right place you know to, to um, let them have a successful career. I am so excited to have a place like this to um, display my art. It's I mean it's so fun it's so visible but it's just a, a fun atmosphere and I love everyone just getting around to talk about it. There is a total of 40 pieces in the art show. They will be displayed at Knott Hall from now until the next show in November. If you'd like to see the University of Alabama through the eyes of a student, go to WVUATV.com. I'm Capstone Correspondent Lindsay Price for WVUA News. 